Hello everyone, welcome back. I am just off of a weekend with Aya, so I had an ayahuasca ceremony this past weekend and I have a lot of things going on in my mind and in my thoughts and in my sphere right now, but I wanted to boil it, not boil it down, but give you the, the feelings that are coming through to be the most important right now. And it started actually before Aya came into my my day. <laughs> so um, the night before, or I guess it would have been the morning before, so on <clears throat> the 9-9, I woke up at 2.30 in the morning and I, I was laying on my side and I felt this like intense vibration right here at my, it felt like my chest center um, or my heart chakra and I was laying on my side and it, I, it was so intense the vibration that I couldn't move and I just remember being like okay just breathe through it I, I must have woken up during an activation which I'm finding that they're, I'm waking up during them now which I don't really understand exactly why but I think it's to have the conscious recognition that it's happening so what it felt like is the using your sonic slider and putting it right there on your chest center. And you guys, most of you have now purchased your sonic slider. You can do that and you'll feel what it felt like is this intense vibration. And I just tried to breathe into it and let it pass through. And it went on for about five minutes. And I'm bringing this up because it made me realize even more so the importance of the sonic slider and using it. For me, intuitively, I was always using it right there or on my third eye. And what I can tell you now is it's preparing the vibration of your chakras to be blasted, <laughs> blasted open. So I would just, I'm going to just say there, please train with it because when it happens for you, it won't feel so shocking because you'll know the vibration and it will, it will feel familiar. It won't scare you. So that morning I just let it ride and I was just breathing into it and I could, I couldn't move. I felt like I was kind of stuck in that position as it, cause it, my whole body was reverberating from that place right in my chest center so I just laid, you know, I was on my side and I just let it pass and I was just breathing and like allowing it to go. And then after about five minutes, it started to slow down or um, not slow down, kind of like as in the sonic slider, just kind of dissipate. And um, I was like, wow. And I, I, and I texted the energy group and I said, um, I had this activation that, you know, and I kind of put it out there, but nobody said anything or I had the same. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then the next, it just so happened that then on a nine ten was my first ceremony with ayahuasca. So I wasn't, my intention wasn't to bring it up, but it did end up coming up. So, um, what happened is in the ceremony with Aya, they showed me that that activation was a diamond light. Uh, it looks like a breastplate, so like a diamond shaped breastplate that was put onto inside of my body that is replicating the sun's energy. So it's, it's interesting in the medicine <laughs> for me, I get like, tons of downloads, some visuals, some emotions, some feeling, but it's like all of them form together to give me the impression of what they're trying to communicate. And so what it looked like was literally, uh, like if you're looking at my, um, my pendant here, this is a triangle, but it came down as a diamond shape, but it was like prisms. And it was just the, the light of the sun. And then I got a download <laughs> that... The sun is going to be changing. And for me, it looked like, sorry, you guys, if you hear baby G, she's around here doing some stuff. <laughs> um, but the sun, as we know it today, is possibly changing. At least that's what I was shown. And that the people that are holding this um, diamond light plate in their heart center 
are going to be the replicas of the sun energy. And the way they showed it for me was that this, the planet goes dark. And I don't want to alarm anyone because it's interesting in the circle the next morning I shared this and um, one of the people in ceremony, ceremony with me had like a an antidote to it that kind of makes sense. So in my visual, it was that the planet goes dark and that there are people and there are many people that carry this diamond light in their heart chakras and literally will become the sun. Not that uh, like you would still be a person, you'd still be walking around doing the normal things, but you carry the energy of the sun and the energy of the sun is where we get our upgrades from. It's where, where all life is originated from. So they were basically saying there, there is um, no fear here. You will just have to make sure that you understand that you are then the beacon, one. And they kept making me, it clear to me that I'm not the one. <laughs> I'm one of the beacons that <clears throat> will carry that sun energy here. And that I need to make sure that I'm sharing it and, and spreading it out as much as possible. And I, of course, my personalities like you mean like through the podcast and they said in any way possible that you can share that light what it does to others is it lights their light it literally is a reminder to them of their energy so it's hard because we as personalities think like okay this I am Gabrielle and I am doing a podcast and that's on the 3d plane right but in uh, higher dimensions what it is is literally me activating whoever is drawn to this energy and it, it doesn't matter the amount of people and maybe it's not even that big of an amount it's not about the amount it's about uh finding the vibration of the people that resonate with with my tone with my vibration that i put out because it's like before we agreed to come into this life for this evolution of this planet we all trained with that vibration and it, and it feels like a remembering like i've heard many of you guys say that when you hear my voice it is like the most calming most relaxing sound for me it doesn't sound like that right because it's coming from me i don't like it but i have gotten to the point where i can accept that for others it is calming and it is uh, almost like a honing beacon for you to remember it in yourself. So the way they showed the beacon being like, it's literally holding that space and then literally sending out the, the vibration, the frequency to all these different points on the planet that are rising in their own vibration. And the, and I've, I've talked about this in the past too, what I see as the matrix is the, the lines that connect us and the spheres are all of you. And basically, they were showing me that that system and these people are going to replicate that energy that we currently receive from the sun. So then the next morning in ceremony of the circle, um, one of my sisters was telling me that she has heard that Bill Gates is working on something to actually block the energy of the sun, not block the sun like we would still see the sun, but block the energy of the sun because he's trying to fight global warming. And even if that is the way that he's addressing it, the way it felt and feels to me is that he's wanting to block these upgrades, these energy upgrades. And, and it's so funny because everything is exactly as it's supposed to be. Because let's say if that's true and he is working on that and it is in our reality going to happen spirit and source is finding ways to combat that in in and it's through us literally like they're saying okay yeah go ahead block block the energy from the actual sun we'll find another way to bring it into the planet and it's like it's not even just activating each other it's activating the energy lines in the earth and all of the species that are on this planet. So it, it it kind of was laughable in a way that when she told me that, so I was like, even though I saw it as the planet goes dark, it could have been um, metaphorically as energy, um, that the energy won't be coming from the sun anymore, but it will be coming through us. And it's also interesting because I've said this in the past too, that we 
are the portals. We literally are the portals of light. And yeah, it just, it brought it kind of more full, full circle. And then on top of that, they showed me, and I say they, there's many people that are talking to me during this, uh, these ceremonies, but they showed me that my, in my human design, my G center, which is the diamond in the center. And I'll, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put it up here so you can see is completely empty. And they said, this is why this is the holder of the light. And this is what you were born to do. This is why you're here. So I was like, interesting. That, that makes sense. Like it, it it's funny how in, in um, a session with Aya, it pulls together all of these random things that you wouldn't consider bringing them together in this reality, but they show what, how they are all connected in this reality. <laughs> and then I also had recently had a conversation with someone about how in my human design, you can find out how you sleep in your human design. So I'm a projector in my daily life, like in my walking around life. But the moment that I go to sleep, I turn into a generator and I don't, I remember when someone told me this, I was like, wow, that's weird. But it makes sense because when I sleep next to Richard, who's a generator, I sleep perfectly fine. And when I, my head hits the pillow, I am out almost like I would say 99% of the time. It's like, uh, there's no issue for me to fall right into it. And they showed me that the reason that is, is that my vessel is a plug to the planet and also to other uh, star systems. So when I lay my head down to go to sleep and they literally showed this, like I literally plug into the network of the universe, I guess. And I am bringing through, not my energy, I'm let it, letting the other star systems pull their energy through my vessel. So like if we even think of like a plug, a, power source you know strip and the plugs that go into a power source strip we literally are those plugs and they use the ones that are open to pull the energy through which remember when when i talked about um the diamond light matrix activation and meditating on your crystal and allowing the energy to pass through you and through the crystal into the earth and then back through you through your heart it's like in a way, I'm saying the exact same thing, but through completely different ways. So it's like they showed me in another way the same thing that I had gotten the download about months ago. And I, I resonate so deeply with that because, again, it's like a confirmation of something that I had already gotten the message about. It's just solidifying it, I guess, is how I, I took it, right? And another big feeling that I am called to share is that, so we look at our vessels and this personality as one, and we always hear like, we are everything, right? We are all connected. So one of the big parts of what I saw and what I experienced um, this weekend was, we are actually, um, uh, like a freeway, uh, let's almost say like a freeway of energies that are literally working through everyone. So when I say that, I mean, all of the star systems are our energy. F they look like threads to me and they're in ayahuasca. They look like um, fluorescent energy threads. And they'll be like a bunch going horizontal, some going vertical, some curving, and they all kind of combine to meet in that space that I'm I in this case my eyes were open and this is what I'm seeing and in the con and in the spots where they meet are eyes and they're just different shapes of eyes all over the place and each eye is blinking at me and um and in this message of this one is that we are just a conglomerate of energy and I, I mean yeah that makes sense and we all know that but the message was, we're not channeling any one star system. We are uh, um, made up of all energies that are benevolent, that are here to help the evolution of this planet. And when, 
it's almost like when we can accept that, for example, yes, we have a soul, we have our higher self, and that is like the, maybe, and this is going to sound weird, like the switchboard <laughs> of who you are. But my higher soul isn't the one that's feeding me all of this information. Um, so the way that I took it is that it's coming through a kind of like a control center that allows the energies to flow through me and to understand because I feel like I'm talking to hundreds of energies. It's not like I'm just communicating with my own higher self. And the eyes were representing those energies. So, um, th like, funny enough, like, I had heard that the peacock is actually, if you think of a peacock, and again, I'll put up an image right now if you're watching this on YouTube, is the tail is all of all these eyes. It looks like it's the all-seeing eye. So um, I googled it, and it symbolizes the all-seeing wisdom of the heavens. And that is the feeling that I got in this visual of they are watching us and they are here with us. And they gave me that image to know that it is like an all-knowing presence. It's not a, it's not human. Like when we try, they said that when we try to associate a, a starseed race with a something that looks kind of human but it looks slightly different or is a different color that's us just trying to make associations with them but honestly they are just energy they don't have our they don't look like us they're not human and our minds in order to understand it kind of like how we have guides let's say and we want them to have a name and we want them to have a certain look it's so that your personality can digest it easier but they literally are just lines of energy it's just energy and literally that is all we are but we are also in this planet 3d uh, matrix we are matter but it's like if you think about um if you look under a microscope into the cells of a body, you see all of these individual cells, but they're working together for the greater purpose of having that matter work, our bodies work, our bodies run. And that's how energy is. It's like all these conglomerates of, of energy coming together. And even if they don't look like they're coming together, they are literally communicating and working together like so many, uh, I don't know, millions of times a second in order for this to happen and it's understanding that when we kind of go into that um more dialed down view we are just energy and and then you kind of step away from the the needing to label it so then they were like again i am from the planet vega and they showed me that like how we as a species went to the moon and put our flag down and said, we've been to the moon. They kind of said that all star races right now or star systems are coming through vessels and almost like staking their claim in, in Gaia saying, we are here for this to help you through this. So the way I took it is like, okay, I'm kind of like this beacon for, for Vega, but at the same time, I'm not only Vega is not only working through me. I'm kind of this open channel that it's allowing other energies to speak through me too. And I, and I've said this before too, a lot of the things that I say, it's not coming from me, my mind, because my mind doesn't know that <laughs> it's, um, it's just allowing the energy to flow through. And that there were times during the night that I said, I need you guys to slow down because my mind can't understand it as fast as you're going. And then they said, it doesn't need to. Let it go. And then one other thing that happened that night that I want to just touch on is that all of this energy was just so intense and dancing in the air and I was getting so exhausted and I the ceremony had closed hours before but I just was still in it so hyped up with all of them talking through me and giving me this information and I finally was like can I, I please go to sleep and for me I can only fall asleep when I'm on this side it's like that's where I plug in on on my um right side and they told me, no, the energy is too intense. I can't plug into the system at this intensity. So they made me stay on my back and write it out. And 
I, I remember feeling like, isn't there some kind of converter or some kind of transmitter that can slow it down before I plug in? And they were like, no, it's you have you have to be in a clear state in order to plug that into this universal grid in order for it to to be ben beneficial, I guess. And then I was like, OK, OK. <laughs> so needless to say, I did not sleep at all. But then. Another thread that happened in my waking life is tying into this. So maybe a few weeks ago, one of my soul uh, tribe sisters um, mentioned to me that Molly McCord does a, a, a podcast, which I obviously knew, and I do listen to it pretty regularly because I everything that has come through her channel feels like I resonate with. And you guys know the moment that someone that I like, personality like, says something that doesn't resonate, it's like a switch. In that moment, it's not a judgment, it's just a switch of, I know their vessel has other agendas going through it as well. And for me, I then back away from it because I I, I try to keep myself um, as free from propagandas or judgments as possible. So I don't watch the news. I don't tune into anyone that has an agenda. And by that, I just mean when you're an open vessel, it's all these energies are moving, right? They're all moving. And if they see an open vessel, they're going to try to put their agenda through you if you're not careful and you're not protected in your own energy. And also discerning because like, I can see myself getting caught up in one way or another and then I realize like hold up that's to this way to this way and that's not what I'm here to spread so I then like an example would be a few weeks ago is when we were on our trip Richard and I listened to a podcast um, called Heaven's Gate and the reason that came up was it actually happened here in San Diego and I had never really tuned into or knew what the story was and so Richard and I listened to that podcast on the drive home and I kept getting this message of if we don't change how we view people that are vessels, then we are in danger of repeating the past. Meaning in the 70s, people were connected. People were using these psychedelic plant medicines. People were becoming vessels and they were getting it, I would say getting it. The problem and what happened is that those vessels became, um, allowed their egos to think that it was them firstly, and then they got followers to believe that, that they, they were gurus. And then you had the followers not thinking for themselves. And then we then fall into this case of Heaven's Gate where it's mass suicide um, to follow the, the leader. and. I, I had like such a deep ugh, remorse for the times and also this pressure of I need to find figure out how to not be a leader, how to not carry that energy. And anyways, I had a plan to do a whole episode about it. And then I realized, hold up, I, I think that's truth. And I think that that needs to be said. But do I want to carry the the dark energy of that through on this channel? And I realized no, because now it's been a few weeks and I've pulled back from being deep into that thread. And I realized like, it's okay for me to share my fears. But at the same time, I don't want to dive into those fears because I do believe we are in a different cycle. And I know that the people that are here to light up the planet know they need to think for themselves and that there is no leader, there is no guru, they're, the only person that you need to trust is yourself. Yes, there are people that can light the way for you and help you remember it in your own soul, but you have to always believe in your own soul and never follow anyone else. So that's an example. So even me, who I try to be so discerning about energies flowing through me, I got scared and I was I was like identifying with what can I do to make sure these histories don't keep repeating. So anyways, when I when I feel someone that is falling down that path of not discerning and letting 
any any energy speak through their vessel, I pull back my energy from that because we attach, attach threads to those that we listen to. It's not conscious, but you literally have a thread attached to that person. So for me, I pull it back and I disconnect. So in the case of Molly McCord, I everything that she has said, I identify with. She has never said one thing that has made me pull my energy back from her. So she on her private uh, website has uh, something that you can subscribe to and um, it's called the Galactic Center and it's basically um, videos but they're just more audio audios that she channels information. So my friend April said, oh, you should go in and, and listen to this one. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, I knew she did this, but I just had never connected to it. So I did. And of course, again, because I connect with her energy and I feel that she's a clean vessel that's letting energy, I would say light energy speak through her. <laughs> um, I, I was like, oh, this is great. So I'm going to link that below if you guys aren't following that or aren't connected to that, because I think in this world of polarities a lot of the people that are on youtube or on podcast are confused about where they're whether they are part of the light or part of the denser energies and why does molly keep her galactic center private she's keeping it the channel clean and that for me resonates so clearly that i i have even more admiration for her so in the, the reading that she did on August 27th, which it, when you guys go in there, what you'll have to do is sign up for it and then um, you can get a login information and you just sign in and, and it's free and listen to them. But the one on August 27th, she mentioned um, something called Star Seed Hotline. And again, you guys know me, the moment that I get a ping of something, my... I guess my personality and also my spirit is like, we need to dig in. <laughs> so she mentions the starseed hotline and how when she was starting her journey, she had a natal starseed um, reading. And I, I don't, I didn't know obviously what that meant and what that was, but I definitely was like, stop on the, on the recording. And I went right to the site to dig into it. Because again, for me, it's almost like in a lot of ways, I become a researcher. If something rings true, or I get this ping of there is truth here, I go into it. So basically I'm going to, I'll link the site below and I, I'm going to talk about them for a while now. So, um, it started with uh, a woman named Lavendar and she's, I think in her eighties now. So she's fairly old and she doesn't do personal readings anymore. Um, but basically through her years of working with spirit, she started, um, noticing, um, anomalies in natal reports. Um, and she started, documenting it and started following the trends and following the energy which is uh, for me what all vessels need to do if you are an open channel it's like you may get one piece of the energy through this one and then you have to wait for it to be confirmed later on down the road by this one and so she over years followed this energy and found that in your natal chart if you have planets at the 26 no 25th 26th or 27th degree with the 26th degree being the apex, those are star seed markings. Now, you know, I didn't, I mean, I know my natal chart, but I wasn't like, I didn't know the details of the degrees. Um, and so of course I check and um, the, I have in my natal chart, Mars um, in the ninth house at the 26th degree of Gemini. And this is a galactic gate. This, this degree is a galactic gate that's connected to the Palladian energy. And I knew at that point, like, I, I know I'm supposed to, this is a thread that I need to follow. So then from there, I signed up to get a um, stage one starseed confirmation reading, which is $88. Now, the issue is they have a 20 week waiting period right now because there are so many star seeds that are waking up and wanting to understand what their their role is in this lifetime. And 
you know, I don't, I, I feel like I'm doing my path, but I also am the type of person that likes confirmation along the way. And it's almost like it gives you like a boost to keep going forward and to keep pushing yourself when the messages come through to do so. So I had the pull to get um, the stage one star C confirmation reading for $88. And then I got an email back a few days later from um, Emerald saying that there was a 20 week uh, wait period. And I was like, <clears throat> you know, I sat with it for a few days and I felt like, you know, everything it comes when you're ready for it, for sure. And but I had the, the kind of knowing to go back in and start looking around on their website some more. And in that email that Emerald sent me, she actually started talking about or she sent some some links or some PDFs of, of support materials to kind of dive you deeper into understanding what these star seed markings are and one of the things that they talked about was um to take the um, supplement silica which i remember kind of looking more into that which i i also will share the information below but it goes kind of deep but essentially crystals are made of silica and they believe that if you are a star seed, if you take the supplement of silica, it's like almost like oiling or greasing up your conduit to source. And yeah, I had, I felt like a resonance for sure with that. So I was like, hmm, interesting. So I went back to the site and I start looking around and I start reading um, more about these. Um, there's two different types of readings that you can get. One is the stage one, which is just a, a they'll email you an MP3 recording of your natal chart review. And um, then also under each uh, consultant, um, like Emerald had, where you could book a stage two consultant with her um, for, for an hour. And then by doing that, you would um, elevate your 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 place in the 20 week wait period. So for me, I was like, hmm, let me check what the pendulum if I need this on a faster track than 20 weeks. And the moment that I pulled out the pendulum, it was like going crazy. Yes. So I emailed her and I said, hey, I, I'm feeling like um, I'm being called to get this information sooner rather than later. And if I sign up for, you know, a, a stage two, would I, can I do it with you? And can, and, and so, yeah, she wrote me back right away and said, yes, if you sign up for an hour of the stage two reading, I will get you your recording of the stage one in the next week. And then we will schedule the stage two, which is essentially like a consultation of where I can ask questions with her live on Zoom. Okay, so I, do, I decide, yeah, I feel like I'm being called to do that. So I do, and I got my um, stage one recording, I think yesterday or the day before, and I am going to share it with you guys at the end of this podcast. I'm going to just insert the recording. It's a half an hour, and, I, and the reason I feel called to share it is I want you to understand what it is, first of all, if you're feeling the call to get this, because I didn't know really what it was going into it. I just knew, and again, I have a pretty good intuition that I was supposed to get it, but I want you guys to understand what it is. Also, she shared with me more of the degree points that matter. And so I also um, end up that I have my moon is in the fourth house of Capricorn and it's at the 12th degree, which is the healer. Then I have my sun, um, which is in the third house, and it's at the 12th slash 13th degree, which is the healer and the avatar. And then I have Neptune in the third house, which is at the 12th degree, which is the healer. And then I have my north node and my south node, both at the 22nd degree, which is the mastership. So essentially, they're, the numbers that I got are 25, 26, 27. Those are the galactic um, degree points. That means that you connect with the Palladian energy and you are um, able to channel through, I think it what she said, 33 different um, star races. And then we have the 12th degree, which is the healer. Then we have the 13th degree, which is the avatar. And as you'll hear in the recording, she explains the avatar to be 
someone that's able to channel through energies of like Jesus, Buddha, um, the spiritual, I would say, gurus or leaders of our time. And it, like, it's funny because she said, like, this is not only you, there are many star seeds that have this degree point, you know, don't get a messiah complex and know that you're not doing anything. It's that you are a channel that you can bring through the energy of that avatar, but you are not the avatar. <laughs> so let me just make that point. And then we have the 22nd degree, which is mastership of something. So um, I... Those are the degree points that I know. Again, they don't share all of that on the website. They only talk about the first three, which are the galactic um, points, which are 25, 26, 27. And I basically, when you listen to this recording, it she she uh, it's a recording. She's never met me. She doesn't know anything about me. It is like she knows everything about me through this looking at my natal chart. And after I read it, or heard it, I emailed her and I said, you do not understand how like dead on this is. And she said, that means that you're living in your flow. You're in, you're living your design. And, and she's like, I can't wait for us to have our follow-up to talk about it. But I am sharing this so that you guys know what it means to live in the flow and that you can get a visual or a, a confirmation of where your flow is. Like, again, two years ago, if someone would have told me this is what I was here to do, God, no, my personality would have never wanted that. But it's only through, like, like the gentle nudges along the way that have gotten me to being completely in why I'm here. And, and I think it's not something that happens overnight. It's like literally going into those fear points one at a time that get you to why you're here. And for me why the, this matters and why I'm sharing it is because I believe that we are being called to step up. And then I also believe that there is galactic support for us to do that. And when I heard this recording, I felt like so validated and not any of validated because I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be getting this energy if I wasn't in the right place and right time. But it's almost like it takes, it gives you like that extra push to be like, you're on the path, just keep going, keep your head down and keep going. And I think a lot of people need that right now. You know, you may not be a completely open channel yet, but I think knowing the areas of where you are meant to be that channel and, and let these energies flow through you to do your work in this time and space if you, if I would have known it, I don't know if it would have changed anything. I still probably would have followed the same path, but I think that it would have given me like confirmation to knowing that I was on the right path, right? I mean, I would say that definitely when I hear from you guys, that is the confirmation that I get that means the most and that makes me know that I am doing the right thing. But there is no way that my natal chart could be more aligned with who I have become in the last two years of my life. You know, I wasn't living my 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 natal chart at all before that. And all of a sudden, here it is, and I'm in it. And I think that if we can help each other out with these tools of knowing, I think that's why I, I know that's why I'm here to share but I only share the truth. So for example, with the sonic slider, and I'm telling you using it on your chest center and your pineal gland, those two are truths for me. And now I've been, they've been confirmed. So I know that that is a tool that we should use. This starseed um, natal chart markings are another tool for you to understand your energy and why you're here and why certain things have come through and how they're meant to come through. And then it's like, I think it will help to alleviate some of the resistance that we all have and knowing that that's the ego fighting you being who you really are here to be. And, and the doubt, that's another part of the ego, right? So 
I hope that this is helpful. I hope you enjoy the the reading. I certainly was blown away by it. And I would 100% recommend that if you are getting one to um, when you sign up for the stage one reading, you can send an email to ariel at starseedhotline.com and you can requ request Emerald to do, to do your reading. And then she'll email you like right back within a few days and then you can have the conversation about if you want to go to the stage two so that you can speed up your reading. But also understand that if you choose to just do the stage uh, one and it takes 20 weeks, the timing is perfect. There is no like rush, you know, unless you feel it. If you feel like I need this information now, I'm just showing you guys an avenue of how to get it now. And I, um, you know, as always, I feel like I'm here to, to share the truths with you and to show you the light and to show you these um, areas of digging in deeper to, to know the light and to know yourself through the light. So I hope that it's helpful. And again, I hope you enjoy it. Gabrielle, it's Emerald here from Starseed Hotline to do your Starseed confirmation reading. Obviously, we've um, already spoken to one another about doing your stage one reading now, and then we'll do your stage two reading um, at the date we've agreed. So first of all, I sent you some documents to read before you listen to this recording, so you have a deeper understanding about starseed markings, as well as the Pleiadian lineup, and this information is vital in order for starseeds to undertake their mission and maximize their potential. And the best thing is to either have your charts printed out in front of you or have them up on screen so that you can follow along with this recording. So we're going to start with your natal chart. And so if you could have your natal chart in front of you now, and um, I th it sounds as though you know a bit about astrology, but just in case, there are three different coloured rings um, in the chart wheel. The yellow ring is the house degrees. The blue ring is the planets and signs. And the green ring is the house numbers as well as the areas of life that are most impacted by the energies that planets are within them. So every house um, has an impact on our life and the sign that it's in. So we're going to start with your third house and you have your sun in the third house which is in Sagittarius. Well Sagittarius is the communicator, the teacher. Um, the higher spiritual philosophies follower. Um, it's where people go for their PhD, the professor, the person who studies and masters something over their lifetime or a way of spiritual values that they kind of live um, throughout their life, you know, live, live um, within their sort of field and within their belief system as they navigate their life. And obviously those beliefs and values can change. Um, but what's interesting is you've got your Sun, Neptune and Mercury. Well, Mercury is the communication planet in the house of the communicator, which is the third house, which is the natural house of Gemini. And again, that is about teaching, communication, healing through your words, healing through your writings. Um, this could also be an emphasis on mental well-being and mental health because Mercury rules the mind. Or it could be working with young people, um, being a potentially a mentor or a teacher or communicator with uh, younger younger people um, maybe up to sort of late teenagehood or early adulthood um, but yeah you've got a, like quite a strong emphasis in your sort of communication sector um, so obviously how that kind of plays out for you only you'll know but I would be I just wouldn't be surprised if your job revolves around some kind of communication so um, other areas that this could cover is technology, uh, vlogging, blogging, um, social media, PR, marketing, sales, um, but certainly a teacher would very much suit you or a coach or a mentor or someone or an opportunity where you're able to really pass on your knowledge and information to other people in some way and make a difference in that way. And sort of following on with the communication theme, you have your Mars in the ninth house, which is if the natural house of Sagittarius, um, which is the house of communication, speaking, writing, publishing, 
um, it's long distance connections, foreign connections, where we go to really learn and master something for a lifetime or for you know quite a chunk of our life. I and mean, then it's also the place where the Akashic Records are. So this is all about higher learning and journeying and adventure, uh, potentially through long distance travel. No doubt your work may have connected you to people in um, foreign countries or overseas, or perhaps you find yourself working with people who carry a lot of wisdom and you're able to really absorb their wisdom and pass that on to others. But your Mars is at starseed degree 26 in Gemini. Galactic degree in Gemini are the ultimate truth seekers and knowers and messengers of truth. Gemini is all about taking in information, learning, but also making sure you put it to good use because many Geminis, particularly at galactic degree, can be information junkies. So you may have loads of books, um, enjoy learning and being of service, but you're not actually sharing your knowledge. So try not to be too scattered and take what you learn to put into good use. So you will have a perpetual need to search for truth. You'll enjoy dissecting information. You can make great teachers, enjoy freedom of speech and speaking your truth, and will be very passionate about justice and balance and harmony in those areas. You will also have an interest in the mind and how the mind works and also be passionate about communication, healing through words, healing through writing, in search of mental well-being and mind intellect and you'll enjoy expressing those feelings and emotions. Um, you may have an interest in science and scientific studies um, and enjoy really kind of searching out the things that are of interest to you. This degree has a frequency that is used by the Federation of Benevolent ETs who work in harmony for our benefit and for the greater good of humanity and the planet. They join and coordinate in their joint projects and this galactic degree is used as a central radio transmitter for all beings to communicate like a radio channel. This one marking connects you to all ET races, likely you have many branches on your family tree friends in high places from all over the galaxy and the frequency of ultimate truth. On a 3D level this gives you a natural resonance with truth so that when you hear it you know it and also when you don't hear it you know it so that's a real advantage. And with so many branches on your tree you may find that you resonate with different star systems so depending on what you're doing and depending on what you need a member can step forward to help you. So for example, if you were doing something scientific, you could have an Arcturian on your team step forward um, because they are the most scientifically advanced. Or for something concerning the Divine Feminine, you could have a Pleiadian come forward on your team because their resonance will come through. So it can really shift depending on what you're doing and which frequency you need to help you through your mission. On the Pleiadian mothership there are at least 30 different species working together as a big fifth dimensional family so it's not about where you came from but what level you're on and overall Gemini is really about the galactic messenger so just know that you don't necessarily need to have the knowledge at the front of your brain it's more that it's if you're in alignment with it and you resonate with something you have a great truth filter there and then you can pass that on to other people. But obviously just make sure that any information you're sharing is always for the highest good of humanity and for you know, fellow star seeds, um, because information that is positive and uplifting is the most beneficial. Now going to your fourth house and you have your moon in Capricorn. And the moon is all about our emotions, how we express ourselves emotionally and how other people see us. And you have your moon in Capricorn, which is all about um, stepping up to a sense of duty, feeling secure when life is structured. Um, it can also be about someone who people just feel that they can really rely on, who's very loyal and supportive. And likely that you take your relationships and your family connection very seriously and you don't kind of jump into things too head first, although Sagittarius can be a bit like that, but yeah, it's almost as though your moon in Capricorn sort of really balances that out. And you may have found that your home life has been quite changeable um, with that moon there, so you might have moved around a bit in your lifetime. Um, 
the thing is with the moon in Capricorn is it is ruled by Saturn so you may have a hard time expressing your emotions or you may have struggled to express your emotions in life you may have learned to shut them down or suppress them um, but you know it really depends on the person because you're Sagittarius you're quite expressive and quite extrovert and outgoing but it might be that you know being very sort of sensitive to what people say to you for instance um, wanting to be the best you can be perhaps there's some perfection and tendencies uh, wanting to live up to people's expectations or a sort of must try harder must do better mentality now hopefully you know you've got that under control and that's something that you've been able to really heal and perhaps you can help other people do the same because your moon is at 11 degrees 42 and that is rounded up to the 12 degree healer degree so this is a star seed degree and this is basically helping and supporting in any area um, of the environment and the earth because it's in Capricorn so you may have an interest in wanting to heal the earth or connect to the planet and heal the planet in some way but actually Capricorn along with Cancer do have rites of passage for, for working with crystals and using crystals and I'm going to be going into this more as I go um, but generally this could be healing through crystals having your own healing through crystals or passing that healing on to other people using crystals using the information within crystals um, now Saturn which rules your moon does actually have dominion over the crystal grid so this could be grid work that could be of an interest or just generally wanting to oversee the healing of the planet um, or the healing of the environment in some way um, now because it's your moon in the fourth house this could also be helping other star seeds to heal um, you know perhaps being part of a tribe or a soul group where you're all kind of together you know healing and if you go to your third house your sun is also at 12 degrees which is the healer degree and your neptune is at 11 degrees 33 which is rounded up to 12 degrees so you've got three healer degrees in within your planet so i'm just checking your house cusps um, and you know whenever i read charts and whenever we're doing star sea charts you know, there's often a pattern um, and often when you get repeated numbers it's like the message is sort of louder um, and you need to listen to it so I've obviously talked about the healing through words and communication and this could very much be the same with your Sun there at 12 degrees and, and also your Neptune um, you know, teaching others to pass on what you know what you've learned I feel that's very strong in your chart some kind of communication now this could also be channeling you've got your Sun conjunct Neptune um, really sort of able to connect to those higher dimensions to the ethereal and the esoteric to higher guides to the galactics um, you know there's, there's a, lot, a lot of potential there it could also be channeling through writing as well um, I mean obviously channeling is something that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to wake up and, and channel sometimes it does take practice to sort of align with it and, and, and align your vibration um, but you know that's certainly an area that you could look into if you wanted to um, healing through your words or your writing um, there's automatic writing channeled writing um, but really trust your intuition because you can ask for guidance yourself and it it will come through for you um, you know you've got that connection uh, with those healing degrees and really sort of helping pass that on to others and also through your Mars in Gemini at 26 degrees which I've already talked about now your sun is actually a two for one degree because it's 12 degrees 32 and this is rounded off to 13 degrees and 13 degrees is the mark of the avatars avatars are ascended masters who have ascended many times over again and they seldom incarnate on this planet but instead work through people like you who carry the avatar marking and this means that you have volunteered to support in some way some examples of avatars are Jesus, Mary Magdalene, Buddha, Kuan Yin, Vishnu, Muhammad, Saint Germain and the list goes on. All avatars are dedicated to our proper evolutionary development and I call the 13 degrees the passive star marking because with this one you don't have to do anything except to just show up. 
With this frequency, everywhere you go, you are broadcasting the avatar energy and carrying it in your field. So you could pass someone at the grocery store who has the same corresponding harmonic in their energy field and your frequency could wake them up to the next level. Or maybe they could have an epiphany or a new idea. Maybe they just get home and suddenly something's changed. But they wouldn't really know where it's come from and you wouldn't really know what's happened. But this is very much a secret agent marking where people will benefit without you even knowing. So, although you won't get to see the results, just know that you're making a difference. And if you ever feel drawn to show up to somewhere, to say a gathering or a group event, do pay attention to any of those urges you get because it could be a request for assistance from one of the avatars. And then if you show up and you're holding the avatar frequency and hankering it in the third dimension, this then allows the avatars to work through you so that they can assist the group for whichever reason they intended. So many star seeds hold this marking, so we do just have to say to not get any messiah complex about um, having this marking because there are many, many star seeds with this marking. But just know that you're all part of a great mission and you're all helping and supporting to bring the balance back into the earth, into this planet, which is a great mission indeed. I wanted to just add to what I was saying also about the uh, conglomerate of planets in your third house with regards to channeling because actually your Mercury is what we call conjunct your sun as well. Um, so you've got this you know, proper energy kind of going off in that third house. So really listen to that. Hopefully you're doing something um, that gives you joy. S you know, this could be writing articles that help people or it could be yeah like I say podcasts or you know reaching a wider audience or just being able to teach in some way and pass that knowledge on to other people and in whatever way that could be and, and like I say this could very much be about young people as well and the young people are going to really need the support of star seeds as they move through these very hmm, high energies that we're currently navigating now going to your second house and you have your north node at 2141 um, which is rounded up to 22 degrees and 22 degrees is mastership degrees this is once again a star seed degree and we have your north node in the water element so with mastership degree it's all about getting the PhD being an expert um, having knowledge um, perhaps a talent or, or knowledge that's been brought through from another lifetime um, and that wouldn't surprise me because in the 8th house you've got your south node also at 21, 41, mastership degree, 22 degrees. So do you feel as though in this lifetime you sort of naturally ha have a talent for something um, and it sort of really fits and aligns with you? With the element of water, this is a very sensitive energy. This could be about the balance of the divine feminine and masculine qualities. This is about spiritual compassion. Perhaps you just are naturally empathic and sensitive. Um, do you feel, you know, a draw towards healing in some way? This could also be about psychic ability and selfless service. Water signs are the most sensitive signs. They're very psychic and very intuitive. So that is a natural gift that you've brought in. Um, so hopefully you're using that in some way. In a more 3D level, the North Node of Scorpio could certainly be, and I'm sort of looking at your fourth house around real estate and property, but I, I won't be really going into that during this reading because this is about starseed degrees. So those are the degrees in your natal chart. And we're now going to go to your progress chart. So the degrees that you get at birth in your natal chart are activated at birth and help guide you and navigate you throughout life. And then the progress chart is where the planets are now since they've been journeying through. It's just sort of more of a kind of mathematical thing. Um, but the planets continue to move very slowly around the wheel for every year of life that you're here. So if you look at your progress chart now and have that open up, and you'll see that the planets are sort of in different houses, a bit spread out more, your sun's in a different sign. But we're going to just look at the star seed degrees and galactic degrees that you're having happening now because what we find is when we get requests for chart readings, often star seeds are having an activation, um, perhaps an awakening or something's kind of changing in their belief system um, or they're ready to undertake a new mission or they just feel like a mission's completed. So um, it's, it's good to sort of visit what's going on currently. 
Now, I think what's really interesting, if you go to your second house, after I've talked about your communication and teaching and knowledge transfer, um, you know, you've got Venus at mastership degree 22 degrees. So here we are again with um, being a master at, in those areas. Uh, you know, do you feel like you've had missions that you've had to undertake through some kind of speaking, writing, communicating, um, or you're about to embark on a new project? Or maybe you're just a, a great verbal linguistic, I mean, maybe it's like translation or something like that. But um, do you like talking and speaking? Um, hopefully you do because your chart just seems to be really set up for it. So I'd be interested to um, know more about that when we do talk um, for your stage two session. Um, but basically it's mastering all those qualities. We've got, this is a... 22 degrees in fire so this is about leadership inspiring others being an innovator using your teaching power being a pioneer and sort of really stepping into your confidence and speaking your truth so hopefully you kind of resonate with that um, and then you also have your Neptune activating the avatar uh, radio frequency there so again if you feel called to be somewhere or to show up somewhere, follow those gut instincts as long as it feels good and feels aligned because that's the avatars wanting to work through you. And sometimes it is just about being around other people and they just get activations. So they're, they're within that healing energy, which is lovely. So that's being activated currently. On the cusp of your second house, you have galactic degree 26 of Scorpio and on the cusp of your eighth house, 26 of Taurus. Galactic degree, Taurus and Scorpio, is the mark of the Pleiades, and this indicates a mark of connection to the benevolent ETs, and twice a year in Taurus and Scorpio there is a Pleiadian lineup, and this will be especially significant for you, and this happens in May and November every year. It's roughly between the 15th to the 20th of May and the 15th and the 20th of November, but will vary due to it being a leap year. So twice yearly, pay attention to what is going on in your life, monitor your dreams and take time for meditation, notice what comes up and which people who show up in your life, any doors that open or close at that time, as this can mark a turning point in your life, but could be quite subtle as well. And you could keep a journal as sometimes seeds can be planted, but at this time not necessarily bear fruit until later on. So keeping a journal will help you keep on track and keep things together and you can join the dots perhaps later down the line. You could also keep a dream diary, which means that you can see if there is confirmation of its galactic significance. This could also be a time of awakening for you as well. So even though you may have felt awakened already, there are points in time where new activations can happen with regards to awakening. So just look out for that. Taurus and Scorpio is also mark of the Crystal Soul Group and there was once a place where an entire civilization thrived in the use of crystal technology and this place was called Atlantis residing in the Leo constellation which eventually destroyed itself due to the misuse of power and it was during these Atlantean times where this misuse of crystals and technology caused much unrest and corruption so there was a pledge by the Atlanteans never again Atlantis. This pledge was made when the Atlanteans knew the end was coming and they wanted to ensure the corruption and manipulation never happened again. They were so serious about this pledge that they altered their own DNA so that all their bloodlines would remember never again Atlantis, an entire continent was lost. But when they knew the end was coming, they didn't want to lose all their knowledge in history, so they recorded it all in master crystals and took them back to Arkansas and buried them to wait for this time in history so we could get it right. This is why we take the Crystal Soul Group to Arkansas so many times over the years, as there is a catalyst that happens when people step into this frequency and energy of the land. We always recommend quartz crystals for star seeds, and there is further information in our quartz crystal ebook which guides you on the taking care of crystals and how to use them. And I'll email this over to you. And because of the history, a good number of star seeds have been reluctant to pick up a crystal because of the Never Again Atlantis pledge. And the crystals from Arkansas carry the records of Atlantis, which is why it's a special place. 
Atlantis was a Pleiadian project, so this is why there is a connection to the Pleiadian ET races. Crystals can be used as healing instruments, balancing tools, record keepers, records of information, and having this marking gives you access to the keys. So do practice meditation with crystals. They can be very powerful for your work. You could use them in your personal life for manifesting and creating crystal grids. You could also use them to set intentions for the highest good of humanity. You could use them in healing with animals, healing within the family. You could take them with you when you're traveling. There's lots of different ways that you could use crystals. They can also be put into water as well to give the water a positive vibration. So do have a look at the email that I've sent you about working with quartz crystals. Now going to the cusp of your third house and you once again have your communication house activated, Galactic Degree 26 of Sagittarius. Galactic Degree in Sagittarius is the mark of the galactic centre and is the highest degree of the entire wheel of all 12 signs. Sagittarians have a passion for the search of truth, of dissecting information, and they make great teachers in the area of higher learning and higher spiritual philosophies. They are passionate about freedom of speech and justice, balance and harmony in what is true and what isn't. They have an interest in higher spirituality, the higher mind, and are perpetual seekers for truth and understanding. So they do make great teachers at passing this information on and really making a difference through their words and through their teaching and interactions. This degree has a frequency that is used by the Federation of Benevolent ETs who work in harmony for our benefit and for the greater good of humanity and the planet. They join and coordinate in their joint projects and this galactic degree is used as a central radio transmitter for all beings to communicate like a radio channel. This one marking connects you to all ET races, likely you have many branches on your family tree, friends in high places from all over the galaxy and the frequency of ultimate truth. On a 3D level, this gives you a natural resonance with truth so that when you hear it, you know it, and also when you don't hear it, you know it. So that's a real advantage. And with so many branches on your tree, you may find that you resonate with different star systems. So depending on what you're doing and depending on what you need, a member can step forward to help you. So for example, if you were doing something scientific, you could have an Arcturian on your team step forward. Um, because they are the most scientifically advanced or for something concerning the Divine Feminine you could have a Pleiadian come forward on your team because their resonance will come through. So it can really shift depending on what you're doing and which frequency you need to help you through your mission. On the Pleiadian Mothership there are at least 30 different species working together as a big fifth dimensional family so it's not about where you came from but what level you're on and you don't need to necessarily have all the information at the front of your brain or consciously you'll just have a natural resonance with truth and what feels right to pass on so of course any information that you do share know that it is most beneficial when it's for the highest good of humanity and making a difference in an uplifting way now going to the cusp of your first house you have galactic degree 27 in libra and on the cusp of your seventh house galactic degree 27 in aries so you have this galactic degree activating the truth and justice, balance and harmony areas of Libra. So you may find that you're feeling as though you're on a mission for that or that that's coming through your interactions or just your personal needs, uh, perhaps being an inspirer to others or supporting others, bringing balance and harmony into their life in some way. This could be through the justice system or it could just be in, it could be within relationships that you're either having or uh, other people are having. Um, so you know Libra is all about the, the divine feminine as well because it's ruled by Venus so this could be the rebalancing of the divine feminine and masculine it could be helping to be a bridge between science and spirits and you know educating and awaking people between those areas or say the head and the heart you know bringing the head and the heart or the mind and body together so those are the areas really that uh, would be covered um, and air is definitely about fighting for truth in a lie detector and, and teaching again and then on the cost of your seventh house with Aries well that is about being the way shower the way seer 
someone that people feel that they can kind of listen to and be guided by and Aries is the pioneer it's the one who never fears to tread um, I mean obviously we all have a little bit of fear but Aries is about being bold and stepping out and kind of taking action taking the lead um, this could be be through your one-to-one -one interactions or your relationships with others I mean it could be that your work involves one-to-one -one work as well um, so yeah wanting to kind of speak your truth and not wanting to hold back and express yourself are really important to you currently with that activation so I suppose with any kind of communication it's always about how it's delivered isn't it that's how you get people on board um, certainly not through sharing fear mongery or um, sharing sort of negativity so you know the role of a star seed is to kind of help uplift people and um, get people thinking in a more higher state okay and then I'm just seeing in your 12th house you've got your Pluto at 11 degrees 42 which is um, activating the healer degree once again in the sign of Libra so being a healer through some kind of truth speech or um, balance within relationships or balance between science and spirit would actually sit very well with that 12th house because the 12th house is the house of spirituality so this could be you going through some healing yourself within the psyche or sort of spiritually um, and really kind of focusing that project on you but then being able to pass that on to other people um, and really sort of connecting people to to themselves to potentially change their inner landscape but like I say that can you know that can be through so many different ways um, but the 12th house is is the house of the imagination of the soul of the dream states it's the place that we go to meditate so this could also be helping people through meditation or supporting people perhaps doing some kind of journeying or shamanic journeying those are just some of the areas that that could be covering but yeah very much an invitation there to be using that healer degree um, to bring balance and harmony to others in some way and sometimes that can just be about showing up it can be being involved in a conversation and just sort of saying something quite poignant and, and um, you know that's full of wisdom and supportive so those are the degrees in your natal chart and progress charts and you know you have a great menu there this isn't about trying to cover everything this is about really some of the gifts that you've brought into this lifetime um, but you know there's always patterns to be seen in a chart and yours is certainly around that um, Sagittarian Gemini axis so if you know anything about Sagittarius and Gemini you'll, you'll understand where I'm coming from um, about that sort of being a student passing on the information to others and healing through communication in some way um, whether that's teaching languages or writing um, you know podcasting radio uh, but it also could be people's spirituality as well you know Sagittarius is the spiritual philosopher so um, do you you know are you part of a community or part of a social cause where you're able to really sort of inspire people through your wisdom and knowledge okay Gabrielle it's been an absolute pleasure to do your chart reading for you and I look forward to connecting with you in a, a few weeks time we've got an appointment in for October um, where we'll do your stage two and I look forward to speaking with you then